This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we got a fun one here today and something a little different if uh, you're a longtime listener to this stream. Uh, we're always interested in, in, in independent wrestling and, and people outside, uh, I guess we could say the norms of professional wrestling, WWE things. But this is maybe even even more outside the norm for even you guys, and I can't wait to to dive into it. But first, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And, of course, video versions are on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. And, of course, we do these live. We've been doing the Indie Mayhem shows live actually over on our affiliates, IndieWrestling.us, on that Facebook page. And, of course, we're posted over there as well on Indie Wrestling dot us so this week as i mentioned uh, we got a a fun one something a little different we're going to be talking about the oil wrestler a uh, documentary that's coming up here uh and uh it, it's uh it's something a little different and i'm really interested in the in this topic and seeing uh learning more about it here uh with me we got two experts in that vein uh first of all with us is uh is gorkin i'm sorry gorkin Go Oh, I told you I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir>. Joining <laughs> us as well as uh, the director, uh, Brian. Oh, let me cue him up there. Uh, Brian Felson is joining us as well. How you doing today, guys? Hey, good. So I, I guess I guess first of all, what is Turkish oil wrestling? Uh, this is I've literally never heard of this before uh, I, I got a communication from you guys and started kind of diving a little bit. But I want to hold back and hear you guys uh, tell me about it. Um, do you want to go over it? Uh, sure. It's one of the oldest sports in the world. It dates back to ancient Assyria and to ancient Egypt. And um, basically, it's uh, they pour olive oil on themselves and they wear leather shorts or pants that are made out of the hide of water buffalo and with olive oil poured all over themselves, they wrestle uh, thousands of people, uh, often last man standing. Um, and the biggest tournament is at uh, is called the Tournament of Kirk- Kirkpinar, which is in northwest Turkey near the Bulgarian border. And that's been going on every uh, summer since the Middle Ages, since the 1300s. So it's the, that's the world's longest running tournament where thousands of Turks just get together and wrestle covered in olive oil in the hot sun in July. And at the end of several days, there's one winner. At a certain point, does it smell like they're cooking out there <laughs> with all the olive oil? <laughs> Gukhan would have to say that because he's the one who <laughs> threw it. Yeah, some part is different to get cooked in that heat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so tell me a little bit more. So uh, so you're, you're a participant in that sport, right? Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, getting into it and kind of your story with it. Yeah, uh, I grew up in Edirne, which is a uh, 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 hundred years already, and uh, it's it's a fascinating tournament, of course, all the time. But I didn't pay attention much when I was living in there. When I came back to United States, and I start uh, uh, making research about my own culture, and then I find out one day actually Kirkunar is in the Guinness record books. And uh, I said, wow, it, in my city is very famous, actually, but nobody knows. Mm-hmm. And at first, I wanted to have that experience being in that field. It's kind of like glad- gladiator field. I wanted to be there. And uh, I started uh, making plans of how I can get there. And I find out it's actually very late that it's a uh, requirement age is, you know, 40, like the last you know, you, you cannot join to that Kirkpunar after 40 years old. Mm-hmm. So, and then I have to rush it, you know, when I was 39, I was trying to get into Kirkpunar. It, it was kind of rushed, but finally we got it there. And then I experienced that uh, 
what part of the body gets cooked in that heat with the oil. <laughs> and that's what the documentary is really about in the long run, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's amazing. So, so I mean, so you, you were first year into that. So what... Is this like kind of more of an amateur sport? Like everybody goes and kind of tests their metal, or is this like a you know there are people that are the badass, like have been there doing it for like as long as they possibly could. You don't want to mess with them. Like like what what kind of is that competition level at at, at this point? Well, you go ahead. Brad. I mean, I can I can answer since I grew up in Edirne and I was uh, you know always inside of those uh, pale ones. You call it. They are, uh, forget about messing up with them. You don't want to walk near them. I mean, they're <laughs> humongous, strong people. Mm. And they grow up, they start wrestling probably, like, not probably, I mean, they start wrestling at six, seven years old. Mm. And you can't even see it in the documentary, our documentary, that like, you know, kids are wrestling. And even those those kids are very badass kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they, they, they are extremely professional. They literally... Uh, Work out very professionally, and they they every weekend they have to go to tournament to be able to get qualified to Kripunar. So basically, every weekend there's a tournament in Turkey. Kripunar is the Olympics of that oil wrestling. So it's not just Kripunar; it's only one tournament in Turkey once a year. Those are like every weekend wrestling. Even the Olympic wrestlers don't wrestle that much. Oh wow! Yeah, I was gonna say because I, I remember. Like I got a nephew that did the high school wrestling. I remember all the tournaments, and 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 yeah. it, so it is like even more intense than Olympic uh, uh, amateur wrestling. It's extremely intense. Yes. Wow. Uh, and so so how did you guys come uh, come through here uh, uh, and decide to put camera to this to, to do a documentary around this concept? Uh, go for it. I had, um, oh, so you you want to say it? Kakana, should I? No, no, you go ahead. No, that's why I, I, I was I, I was you know fifteen years ago. I had was living in Turkey with my ex wife, who was a who was um, an opera singer there, and we were living there. And there was a military coup. You know, they overthrew the government, and we filmed it. And uh, we filmed terrorists and death row inmates and generals. And uh, Gökhan bought the film and w- was kind of a fan of it and helped to really distribute it. He was very helpful. He, he, he loved the movie. And we lost touch with him. And then years later, I got a call from him, uh, you know, over a decade later. And he says, well, you should make a movie about me. And I said, well, what are you talking about? And then he told me this crazy story about, you know, what had happened in his life. And I, I won't spoil it in the film, but... How does a middle-aged American businessman suddenly find himself, you know, wanting to be covered in olive oil on the field, getting smashed around by giants? Um, but it's an absolutely insane story. And I said, well, I don't believe that you can do it because you're overweight, you're middle-aged, you're just, you know. And he he, he had gotten in a coma, so his, he had metal in his hips, and he was a mess. And um, And he said, no, I'm serious. I said, look. Buy this equipment. This is what you should get, and then um, and get back to me, uh, you know, in a month if you're still actually serious in doing it. So he bought it, sent me some footage in a month, and I'm like, oh my god, he's actually for real. And then he started winning some some tournaments, and, and he totally reshaped his body, started winning some things, and I'm like, all right, that's it. We're flying to Turkey, and we're doing this. <laughs> it was just insane. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. So how talk about a little bit of that? So you you're like, were you not much of a, uh, a, a an athlete going into this then? Like, was it a, like, this is when I started to, you know, kind of invest in my body a bit more or, or just at this level? Well, uh, I was, uh, I was doing some runnings here and there. I was, you know, some, uh, kind of like weekend warrior things that it was, I wasn't professional athlete at all. Mm-hmm. So it was it, it just the cultural, like cultural part of that event actually pulled me into it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like how physically tough I I can show that I'm very, you know, extremely tough guy. I can do it. So basically I wanted to experience that uh, rituals and then the thousands of years of the culture. I mean, basically kind of you watch the gladiator movie, you you feel like, oh, I I wish I live in that area and I wish I kick some ass in that that field. You know what I mean? It it was like... uh, Fix uh, mixed feelings, and uh, that provide a lot of motivation to me to sh- reshape myself 
and get into it. It, I, you know, there was no way after you know, be forty years old to be trying to become a champion because it's, it's not even uh, possible to get in that level uh, to start with that level anyway. But uh, I definitely have to reshape my body to be able to protect it from getting injured badly. So, and uh, try to stay there as long as I can, at least get qualified for it because the uh, Kripana, not everybody can, hey, I want to uh, join the Kripana. As I said, that's the Olympics of oil, oil wrestling. It's not like any tournament in ter uh, Anatolia. So, uh, and I had to have a couple of tournaments to join and at least uh, it win one but and uh, that way they can qualify me in my age. So uh, that's why I had to uh, get exercise and I hired a personal trainer and he did an awesome job with me. So basically, and also uh, this happened after my accident, the uh, two weeks of coma with motorcycle accident, my back, my both legs are shattered badly and I have to recover from that and then get ready for the Kryptonite kind of very tough wow. uh, uh, tournament. So I had to work out like basically eight hours a day, at least like every day. But if, but if you saw the before and after of, uh, well, I guess in the film you can see the before and after at the beginning, what his body looks like and what he looks like when he's finally on the hero's field at the end of the movie. I've never seen a transformation like that in a number of months. And, uh, and also the fact that he was able to train in America with an array of different types of, you know, traditional wrestling uh, trainers and um and uh, CrossFit trainers and yoga trainers and and martial arts trainers. When there is no oil wrestling training here, it was was it was crazy as well. The whole thing is crazy. <laughs> and, and now looking at it, like you know, I, I'm recognizing a little bit of the you know again the amateur wrestling. I'm seeing some of those moves in there, but then there's like looks like slapping in the head a bit more <laughs> often than I I, I notice in, in in the other wrestling. Yes, it is actually extremely. You know, I mean. Very different than the uh, amateur wrestling. This uh, this is kind of like uh, uh, you could say like even fighting sometimes because they hit and legally is, is, there's no disqu disqualification by hitting your opponents in the neck with your very strong big hands, and that's actually make uh, you know throwing his balance uh, offside so you could uh, attack him, and it's very legal, very uh, normal. But uh, also uh, some rules are different than. Uh, like for example, if you if you carry your opponents like uh, four steps, five steps, and you win. So basically, that's another thing. It's like very different than each other. A lot of difference, but uh, um, still, it's what we call it wrestling anyway. <laughs> that's great. Do you have something, Brian? For no, I just I just some of the moves that you guys were doing. I mean, well, well I tried to make heads or tails of some of it and a wrestler showed me and I couldn't lift my hand over my head for a week. So I really <laughs> have to defer to Gukhan. But when I was, you know, just seeing them, uh, you know, one, once they were actually had a guy's face on the ground and was basically choking him out so he couldn't even breathe, was almost passing out or just things to play with, you know, the olive oil and how blinding it can be when they get in your eyes. And there's all kinds of or what is it with the sticking their hands down each other's pants? Like, how does that work? Yukon? Yeah, I mean, since the, your, your body is oily, you don't. Uh, uh you don't have much space to you know, hold on to it. So basically, uh, that's uh, that's the leather pants only thing to grab it and lift it, and that moves. You know, some uh, uh, techniques are actually uh, is all about the get, putting your hand in, and then uh, lifting from with your arm your opponent. Otherwise, how can you lift that oily guy anyway? But uh, everybody get uh, misunderstand that situation. Actually, that, uh, that's why they <laughs> there's some bad, interesting names on that sport, but. And uh, I realized that, my, you know, it's uh, if if you touch your opponents in the private zones in there, and he complains about, or the referee sees that, feels that, you know, you are doing some kind of bad moves, you get disqualified. So it's uh, the rules already there, basically protecting your uh, opponents. But you know, there are only certain ways that you can put your hands in there to be able to grab him and then lift it turn him on and turn him off or, you know, carry him somehow if you could. And um, 
Yeah, there's a, a lot of difference from the regular, you know, amateur wrestling, basically. But you know, it's all all its own sport, basically. You should call it maybe something else. Who knows? Why olive oil? Like I, I you know, <laughs> I, 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 I guess we should have went down to that base question. Why olive oil of all things? There, there are so well, many legends about it. Uh, you know, historically, all over the web. Uh, there's myths about how, you know, everything from uh, in ancient Egypt, trees sprung up in a certain area to the Ottoman Empire. Two people were at a camp and they were wrestling. And there, there, there are so many different legends about it that you can sort of pick your own. Um, the, the only thing I can say is that they're very collaborative in terms of making sure each other's um, there isn't a sense of honor to it, which I find amazing that they will make sure that it's fair and that each other has olive oil totally covering their bodies. So that way, like one wrestler will make sure the other wrestler is totally olive oiled. So that way they won't have an unfair grip or unfair advantage. There's a lot of honor to it as well. But man, if you've ever gotten olive oil in your eyes, it's I don't know how you can do that in 100 degree heat because that alone is painful, let alone wrestling a 250 pound guy trying to break your neck. Jeez. And, and, and I say you, this is something that's been going on for 650 years, according to your website. It's, 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 well, it's, that it's tournament, has, the sport itself dates back, you know, over 3000 years. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, the uh, sport. Yeah. Wait, I mean, this is this, this sounds like it's straight from the Coliseum days. <laughs> it is actually, in fact, I mean, uh, uh, gladiators were uh, sometimes trained with the olive oils because the olive oil based in the you know, Mediterranean area, anyway. So, and uh, gladiators were training with the olive oil, and sometimes the soldiers were training with the olive oil wrestling because olive oil wrestling is actually uses different uh, sets of muscles. And even though you are in great shape, I mean, if you do like uh, ten minutes oil, oil, oil wrestling you definitely get sore in certain areas. You never, you didn't even think that there's a muscle in there. You know what I mean? It's like uses different muscles. Uh, that's why. And um, training entire body, you know, entire your body to be able to fight with the opponents. And um, you have to train every single muscle, basically. Uh, so they were using this old oil for gladiator training also back back time. And then also, uh, I just want to comment about the old oil Burning in the eye, seriously, it burns terrible. And then in that case, of course, you, it blinds you. And then you have to ask your opponents, hey, can I wipe my eye? So, and then uh, if your opponent says no, the referee doesn't give you a napkin to wipe your eye. If your opponent says that yes, then you can wipe your eye. But uh, um, if you say no, uh, it's kind of a bad thing. You have to say yes to your opponents to wipe his eyes. And actually, one of my wrestling matches, uh, he he asked uh, me, "Can I wipe my eyes?" I didn't. I thought he's asking me, "Can you wipe your eyes?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "No, I don't need to." And then the uh, referee says, "He says no." So basically, he's asking about his eyes. Uh, I said, "Oh no, no, please have him not wipe his eyes, so I can keep wrestling with him. I don't want to win him because of the you know he doesn't see me." <laughs> so he wiped his eyes, and then uh, he gave me. Uh, napkin. I, I, I wipe my eyes, but I need to keep uh, keep wrestling. Basically, there are some rituals like that, small rituals to respect each other. Uh, each, you know, opens basically. There's some culture in it too. It's pretty good. Very very cool sports actually. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> so so uh, you know, kind of uh, a little bit of the pro wrestling connection. I see Cole Cabana is narrator for this. And I know he's been doing some interesting things with his uh, pro wrestling fringe. I've, I've listened to a couple episodes, and I know he really kind of looks at these alternate and you, you little known kind of things. This seems right up his alley for something like this. Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's really one of the sweeter and more interesting and more articulate, um, you know, promoters of the sport. And the fact that he's not just the hair club president, but also a client is, <laughs> is very attractive as well. And, you know, he's, he even did a solo show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, um, which I really, really wish I could have seen. Um, but, yeah, he's just he's a delight. Hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, it's a great voice to be lending to, to something like this, too. Uh, so tell me, what is um, how can people find out more about the, uh, the documentary? Uh, what's kind of the future for things going on with it? Uh, we're going to be sending it to film festivals and then trying to get distribution, mostly uh, foreign and cable um, uh, in the spring. Uh, it looks like uh, the film will be available online in the spring as well. So we'll have a link to that.
That's amazing. So what can people do to help uh, find out more information now or even support you guys in uh, putting this together? Uh, they, they can go to the oil, the oil wrestler.com. That's the oil wrestler.com where they can, uh, where if they enter in their email address, the only email that I will send them will be in about four or five months with the link to where they can actually get and see the film. Um, and otherwise they can just, they can look up the oil wrestler on Facebook and that page will have uh, updates and information as well. well. That's amazing. Um, so I have, I have a question I usually ask the indie wrestlers, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, uh, uh, about this. Uh, what is the best and worst thing about oil wrestling? <laughs> I, I think we know the worst, but is there a second worst? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, worst thing is of course getting uh, injured, mm -hmm. but, uh, best thing Become a champion, but you know, we, you know, only one person gets a champion, and that guy probably wrestled since it, you know he, he was born. But uh, that's a good question. It's the best thing I would say, just being in that field with that six hundred men in the same time, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's amazing feeling. You know, you you just feel in you're in diff different universe at that moment because it's like uh, uh, it's the kind of like war zone. But very respectfully, you love each other. Basically, you respect each other, and uh, but you are in the middle of the war right now. With six hundred men, whoever wins, respectfully. So, and uh, this oil wrestling used to be time limitless, like limitless time. So basically, some some wrestlers back then was uh, lasting like from uh, sunrise to sunset, two days, three days, and then they reduced the time to four hours. And then they reduced to two hours. I remember those two hours times. Now they reduced to four to five minutes because 600 men can take like a month to get finishing. So, and again, like super hardcore sport and you are in the middle of it. You are in that field that you are touching the grasses. That's an amazing feeling. And uh, I wish uh, a lot of people could feel that, but uh, only a few people can. <laughs> and I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only thing I can think of uh, that, that it sounds like to me is being in the most badass mosh pit ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, even I, you know, I'm jealous of because you know I'm much more diminutive and uh, and uh, that I could never do such a thing uh, that Gokhan did. As a matter of fact, the fact that he could do it as a middle aged person and transform his body like that is crazy. But um, even going there, if anybody has the opportunity to go to Kirkpinar in Turkey in July uh, for for a few days, just to be there among you know ten thousand people watching this thing with just the noise and the excitement and all the crazy cultural things that you can participate in and see around it, and all of the traditions that just engulf the small town during the week it happens. It's really like being in another world. It's like being in another century. It, at times, like being in another planet, and it's well worth going to. It just feels magical to be there. Exactly. So kind of like going to, you know, back time, uh, watching that gladiator shows in the arena. You know what I mean? It's very similar, instead, except at killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, similar, it's similar, cool. it's very similar ish. Cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Go again, go check out everything at theoilwrestler.com. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining me here today. It's been great learning about the sport. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Go check them out. And of course, check out everything else going on wrestlingmayhemshow.com, indywrestling.us. You can check out past interviews, some 180 some odd uh, interviews over the years. They still hold up. Maybe my interview skills don't, but uh, <laughs> go check them out. If you like this stuff, uh, support us, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Thank you for everybody that has been supporting us there and literally keeping the lights on here in our new studio. And uh, of course, please, if you have any ideas, uh, uh, whether uh, wrestlers for us to talk to people around in the indie wrestling or uh, obviously some stuff outside pro wrestling that we can have a lot of fun with the, the show, uh, hit us up at the email address. Good time at wrestling mayhemshow.com good times plural sorry and uh 412 wms0 is the hotline and thank you for everybody that's been hitting us with suggestions we're looking to do a pretty big in 2018 and really appreciate everybody's support go check this documentary out keep an ear out for it sign up for that newsletter and until next time support indie wrestling and support oil wrestling documentaries oh. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.